Hey guys, Corth Camel EDV. Um, love the T7. Uh, probably my favorite adventure bike uh, to date. Uh, one of the things that I'm not super stoked about with the bike is the cargo carrying capacity. Um, there's no cargo rack in any way, shape, or form from the factory. So they've got two cargo tie downs here on each side, and you can do like a web net or something, and it puts the stuff on the pillion seat. Uh, so I was looking for something. A uh, little bit beefier than that so that I could throw a bag on the back, tie it down uh, for day trips and things. Or to mount uh, rackless luggage, uh, Moscow reckless stuff, giant loop, enduro stand, etc. We wanted something small and light and sturdy enough to throw a tool bag on the back, um, you know, backpack, rackless luggage. Uh, but this is in no way, shape or form intended to be used with a top box of any size. It's just not. There's lots of good options for... Uh, for top box mounts, uh, this is not one of them and it's not intended to be. Uh, install is a little bit more uh, involved because we have to take the bodywork off here to drill these two holes. So one of the challenges with putting a cargo rack on this bike is there's metal here and metal here that you can ac access. Um, and then there's some mounts underneath here for the tail section. So you either need to mount those and coming up and around. There's a few people that do that. That's a, a good option too trying to get any sort of uh, strength here when this is as far back as any solid mount is on the bike um, is a bit of a challenge. So we've done it a little bit differently. We've come up through. So you're gonna have to uh, drill through the plastic here. And I know uh, a lot of people will not be interested in doing that. That's cool. It's just not a product for you then. It's the way that we've, we've chosen to do it. Lots of other options though that don't require drilling. And then we've got some fitting bits and pieces. Um, you do need to drill into the rear uh, fairing section and we do include um, a tapered step bit for it. A lot of people don't have them and they are quite expensive. Uh, so we're included in the kit just to make sure that you have what you need. So yeah, we've got the plate. This is eighth inch stainless. Uh, we tried them in eighth inch aluminum and they weren't quite strong enough. So we put a bunch of holes in here specifically because we don't want people drilling it to use it with a top box. That's not what this is intended for at all. If you put a top box on here, it's likely to fail. It's just not intended to have a lot of weight towards the back just with that leverage. It's not what it's for. Lots of good options for that stuff out there, but this is not one of them. Um, so we've got some spacers here. We've got some aluminum uh, threaded couplers, some countersink washers. These guys hold the plate. Um, down into the couplers. These ones are for the sides. And then depending on whether you have the uh, factory tail section on your bike, if you have one of our camel tanks um, with the factory tail section, you're gonna need the longer bolts here. If you have one of our tail tidies or the OEM um, tail section still, uh, you're gonna use the shorter ones here. So install is gonna be a little more involved with this one because we have to take the plastic off the back uh, to drill the holes up into the back of the plastic here. Uh, we've got to jump around a little bit. Um, I got to cut some sections of video from a previous install video we did because of some, some embedded nuts that you need to knock out uh, of the tail section here. And they've already been done on this bike because it's got, uh, it's got our, our camel tank on it normally. It's not on just to do this video to make um, lining the shots up a little bit easier. Uh, but you'll see when we get under there. So I'm just gonna show you uh, one side on the video. Both sides are exactly the same. Uh, so there's no point in going through the whole thing. Uh, we're gonna pop the seat off, set it aside. So these are excellent. They're magnetic parts trays. Um, you throw your uh, fasteners in here. They don't go anywhere. Stick to anything metal on the bike. Great place to retain everything. So you need a four mil Allen and a T30 Torx. First order of business, we got these three here on both sides. Eight mil or 30 mil Torx, or T30 I should say. I'm gonna pull this guy off. There's a plastic uh, push pin in here, so just make sure when you're doing it that you don't pull too hard or you'll break that off. I broke the one on the other side. They are pretty fragile. While we're here, there is a plastic rivet right there. Make sure you pop that guy out. So get it out, just push the center in and it will release. And then to reset it, 
that's the resting position there and pull it all the way out to there is reset so you can reinstall it and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side so there are five uh, M6 bolts here they are four mil allens and they have a little plastic and copper uh, washer collar assembly and down here we've got one there one there one there one here one here one down there and now with that done we can remove uh, the plastic here so you just pull it out a little bit and slide it back like so and there's a little hook here on the back and it slides over that so when you lift the whole thing off you've got to come back with it uh, this material is ABS plastic it's pretty brittle it's kind of annoying I wish they had gone with a uh, something a little more durable given uh, what the bike is intended for these are uh, the M6 bolts here that come from the underside uh, that hold the tail section on or the tail tidy so these guys got to go these are embedded nuts um, they're hex on the top here so you looks like they're regular nuts they're not they're actually embedded into this plate uh, the nice thing is when we knock these out we're left with uh, an 8 mil hole so we can get 8 mil bolts down through the top instead of using m6 so whether you have the oem tail section or you've got our tail tidy you're going to take these back two bolts out set them aside you're going to take the black oxide bolt that's included in your kit and you're going to thread that up into the embedded nut so you can see that that's the head from the oxide bolt there and then you're just going to take a hammer and you're going to give this a smack and now the embedded nut is popped out of the frame and you can discard that and then we're going to do the same thing on this one so now we've got these holes that go all the way through to the ground and lucky for us these are a hair under 8 mil and an 8 mil bolt is a hair under 8 mil as well um, you might want to run a, a 5 16 or an 8 mil drill bit through here there's a little uh, knurled section there is where those embedded nuts grab so we've got the holes here where the embedded nuts were and these are where the uh, the threaded couplers go on so that's these guys here and they're going to go like that we need to drill the rear bodywork to um, have two holes for this to pop up through first so we're going to slide this back on so that we're sure that the um, the bodywork is in the right spot before we drill it you don't have to throw all the bolts in here but um, i would recommend putting a couple in this is our tail tidy um, if you have a the factory oem uh, tail section it's going to be the same thing you're going to take these two bolts out obviously we've done that before we knocked out the embedded inserts but the um, drill bit just goes up and it's just contacting the plastic right now they don't want to be putting any weird pressure on the bit just straight up and down if you have it cocked off one way or another you're going to have the holes aren't going to be lined up up top properly so just nice and neutral like so and then same thing here not too much pressure you can hold the, the tail section uh, with your hand just so it's not flopping around. So you can see the two holes here. And we're going to take the step bit that's included in the kit. The um, coupler nuts are 19 millimeters OD, so we've got 18, 20, 22. You're going to need a little bit of wiggle room, so we're going to go to the 20. So um, just nice and slow into plastic here.
and go slow and take it easy. Um, these are sharp and they do carve through plastic pretty quick. So if you're not careful, you may end up just putting it through right through the next step. So we're gonna take the bolts uh, out of here and pop this cover off again. Don't. That's every sound you wanna hear. The dropping of the bolt and not coming out the bottom. You can take this piece off to drill it too. Um, might be a little bit easier when you start to put the bit down. Um, it actually will drop into, um, into the holes here. So the coupler nuts are gonna go on top. And then depending on what you've got going on um, underneath, uh, tail tidy or OEM, I just slide the bolt up from the bottom and thread the coupler nut onto it. You can put, um, you can put blue Loctite on these guys, it's recommended. Leave them a hair loose. We've got the, uh, the hex cut on the top here, so even when the plate's on, you can slide a wrench up underneath to hold them if you need. And then we're gonna put the plastic back on. There's a tab on the back here, this guy right here, and it mounts just on top of the tail light. So you gotta get that uh, on first. So put it, put it a little bit low there, and then it'll slide on. Then drop your plastic on. We've got the coupler nuts coming through here. So that's the cargo rack's gonna bolt to there and there. So we can go ahead and put all the fasteners back in here. So we take the spacers and drop them in the holes here. Put this over top. And then I would recommend taking the short countersink bolts and getting these started. And the reason for that is if I let this go to try and get the longer bolts in, it tips up like that and then the spacers can go rolling away and then you're chasing them and stuff's falling all over the place. So just get these down far enough that um, things are kind of staying where they need to be. And then we're gonna take the longer bolts uh, with the countersink washers Slide them in. And these holes are a little bit oval, and so are these. So if you just leave them loose, you can get them started without too much hassle. That's what I recommend with all of this stuff. Just get them, get everything just started, not quite tight, and make sure you've got everything lined up properly first. So you can look on your seat, you can, you can square it up however you, however you like. And then give them a tighten. So blue Loctite, uh, recommend on all of this stuff. So this guy we can't uh, totally tighten up because the coupler nut and the bolt underneath aren't, um, aren't totally tight. So I'm gonna put the ratchet on the bottom to tighten the bottom and the top at the same time. Like so. so you can see the angle is almost the same as the seat as you come to the back. We want to keep this uh, fairly flat, but obviously it can't be too low where it's going to contact uh, the plastic here. But it's about as flat as we can get it. And we've got lashing loops here and here on both sides. Uh, so when you put your rackless luggage systems on there, uh, you have something to tie to. So like a dumbass, I forgot my um, reckless 40 at the house this morning. So I'll throw on the disgustingly dirty reckless 10 that I normally carry for day trips. Let's go through here. This one, <laughs> this bag has been on, on the, uh, uh, cargo rack so many times that the uh, the luggage is just or the straps are just have a have a kink in them. That was interesting. 
So the straps have a kink in them just where it sits. That's how much testing we've done with this. It's been on my bike for uh, basically the whole season. So this plate has been, has been put through the ringer. And then of course we tie down the sides, but that's the whole, that was the whole point uh, of this rack or the main point is that with this luggage, you have something to tie to. If you just have a day bag, you want to lash on here with rock straps or something like that, then, uh, then great. You've got a spot to do that as well. I find it really useful uh, to carry my Pelican case with the drone on it or drone in it, I should say. So you're all wrapped up with the install. We've got um, a dozen of these shoulder bolts. And they're going to go back to the plastics here, three here, three on the other side, and then three on each side of the uh, tail. I'm not going to go through uh, putting those back in. You know where they came from. You took them out. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. I would recommend doing this with a torque screwdriver, though, rather than um, an electric impact gun. The plastic bits on here are fairly fragile, so it's quite easy to crack them. Uh, if you have any questions about the minimalist cargo rack for the T7, as always, info at camel-adv.com. Thanks for watching. Ho <laughs> ho!